the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Brought to you by Canadian Tire, Burris Optics, Mercury Marine and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffix Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, and Yukon Gear. Thunder Bay, Ontario is the center of the universe for anyone looking for the ultimate hunting or fishing adventure. It's a day's drive from southern Ontario or a few hours by plane from virtually anywhere in Canada. You guys ready to rock and roll? And it's also home to the legendary writer, angler, guide, and senior editor of Ontario Outdoors magazine, Gord Ellis. August and I drove up to Thunder Bay and we're going to spend a couple days fishing with Gore. So is this the first dam? This is the first dam on the Nipigon, so everything from here can go to Lake yep. Superior. So that's why you get salmon and stuff. Gotcha. So what got you up here? I mean, you, you said you moved here when you were... Were you born here or your dad moved here? My dad, my parents moved here. So my dad's from Smithville, Ontario. Yeah. And farm boy. Not a lot of money, but he was a track star. So he uh, got a scholarship to go to a university in Texas. Oh, okay, you weren't born yet. So- Hear met, that, August? Met my, uh, met my mother, who was from California. <laughs> okay, so like, already hit the jackpot. He's got this beautiful California girl. Marries her, and then I was born in Abilene, Texas. Whoa, no way! Yeah, I was born in Abilene, Texas. And then six weeks old, we moved to Thunder Bay. So, so that explains the surfer, cowboy, uh, uh, I, outdoorsman. I don't know, but I was born in, like I have, a, I have a Texas birth certificate. That's incredible. Yeah, but I've lived in Canada, you know, obviously I'm Canadian. Yeah, That's a, that is kind of cool though. Yeah, it's cool. really wild, so. Oh, there's another hit, there's something down there. So, I mean, you spend a lot of time on the river, but um, I mean, Lake Nipigon's an inland sea in itself. And, and I'm going to say very inaccessible. It's only got a few places you can access it. Right. And they say there's, you know, a crocodile-sized pike. Yeah, it's true. It's, um, uh, Lake Nipigon is one of the coolest, coolest lakes in North America. It's so wild. You can get trophies of all species in one bay, like true <laughs> trophies, you know, like you can go and get really big The lakers. biggest fish of your life. Biggest, you know, your personal best, then you can go and get a giant pike, like a true giant, and then a trophy brook trout all in the same spot, wow. basically, like within five minutes. And then as far as guiding goes, um, you know, your, your days of guiding out here now, your guiding business at word of mouth? I, yeah, I don't really advertise it. Right. Um, How many days a year do you guide? About 55 or 60. It was a little uh, down during the pandemic, needless to say, but... Is that an average though? Yeah. Really, yeah, huh? Yeah, it's about an average. Wow. Yeah, it's a, quite a few. I never thought I would do that much guiding, honestly. Like, um, I really enjoy it though. And, and one of the things that is the coolest is seeing somebody like get their personal, like catch a, like a giant brook trout and get that personal best and you see how excited it. they are. Yeah. And it's like, it's like reliving your own excitement again. It's true, like, that's that the, happens. That's the coolest thing. And that's, that's what I love about guiding the most. Gord does his guiding out of the Quebec Lodge in the town of Red Rock. The lodge is a place that I've been lucky enough to visit a couple times over the years, but it was August's first time staying here. And our host, Ray Rivard, welcomed us with style. We're on the Roadkill Cafe. <laughs> and a great dinner. Legendary right there. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. Lake Nipigon is a massive body of water and has a history of being a nasty place when the weather turns. But it's also home to giant fish, including the world record brook trout. Was the world record caught above the dam, below the dam? It was uh, 
It was actually caught in the river uh, before the dams. Not super far from here though. You, you kind of go around the this big point of land and you're into the old river channel yep. and that's where the, the world record was caught. The old world record? History. New world record? Boom! 1558. Not the year either. On the eve of the anniversary of the world record brook trout being caught, I had to pinch myself. It's all coming together. I'm going to beat the record by time. I caught it a day earlier. And by size. Wow. This is likely a once in a lifetime trip for me. And to be able to share it with my daughter is priceless. It's like one place I've always wanted to come, August. See? Very nice. There's a fish. Here we go. Fish on. August, he's got one. Right off the, right off the top there. Oh, nice brookie. Big brookie. Nice one. This is a good fish. Good brook trout. And they go left, right, left, right, down. Yeah, that's down. pretty, pretty chaotic sometimes. Look at this guy go. Yeah, he's he's, he's ornery. Taking no prisoners. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey! Like a lacrosse goalie. Okay, we'll flop him in the live wall there and get some shots. That one's tagged, so we can talk a little bit about wow, that too. Wow, nicely done. We got one. Can you see it? Yeah, go you sure can. Go back in there and have a look. That's it has a, a tag in it, August. Yeah, it's back. Brook trout. Maybe you can actually see that, August, because my eyes aren't that good. Oh, yes. Yeah, 114467. 114467. One, one, Do uh, you call those in? Yeah, you can find out you can find out exactly when it was tagged. Okay, I'm gonna uh, save that info on my phone. A tagged fish, kiddo. And we'll measure it to see what it measures. I'm gonna say it's probably 21 inches. Beautiful fish. One one four six seven. One one four six seven. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna bring them down here. So 21 inches right on the nose. Gorgeous. See how his fins are starting to color up? Yeah. Yeah. So these. By, by the end the of fall. August, this Listen. fish will be way more colorful than even this, but that's a pretty, that's a pretty colorful brookie already. The fact that that thing had a tag in it. Yeah, that's cool. Is so even cooler. Yeah, somebody's caught it and released it. And that's the other thing, like catch and release has been a huge part of the, the comeback of this fishery. Yeah. It just like a lot of these fish are caught more than once, which is great. So we're, we're going to enter that number and we'll probably find out. Yeah, we'll, I, we'll get the information it on it and uh, who, who tagged it likely and like it's not necessarily caught here. It could be tagged in another part of the lake. Yeah. Like they cruise around. That's right. It's really cool. Beauty. Oh well, it's gonna be your turn soon, August. Once we get warmed up here. Now we found them. Now we found them. I can feel the intensity level going up now. <laughs> Eye of the tiger. A few years ago, I was fishing this spot with a couple uh, women who were fly fishing here, and. One of them had a fish follow up and she figure eighted it with a fly and got it. Wow. I'd never seen that before. That was it's a supposed to be with a fly rod. With a fly rod. She figure eighted a brook trout with a fly rod and got it. How did she manage to work the shtick like that? I don't know. It was pretty impressive. That was a, it was a first for me to see that. But uh, they do follow. They'll come right up to the boat sometimes. They don't seem to be scared of the boat. Finally, action on the swim bait. Is August going to net it or are you? August, it's probably, it's probably it? a 50 inch gator. Is it a big pike? I don't know, it's just holding, so. Oh. It's, it's fighting like a gator. It could be, yeah, it could be. It, if, it's a gator, if it's a gator, that net's not going to work. If it's, if it's the world record, that <laughs> net's not working. I can, uh, I can get the big net out. It's a gator. <laughs> oh yeah, not a bad one. Oh That's man. That's not a bad one though. Oh. Well, there you go. We were talking about them, and there he is. Well, I, it's funny because the first thing we that happened, we got here. I got bit off, and right. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, yeah. could that have been a big brook trout? Pike need love too. <laughs> Look at this thing. I'm not expecting him to make it to the net. Oh, here we go. Yo, yeah. Lift, 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 lift. Yeah, you good did job. it. Good job, August. Perfect. Well done. Ah, a Lake Nipigon Pike. The elusive water wolf. Water wolf? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, oh I yeah, need here. some pliers. Got the, we got the, we got the kudas. Good net job, kiddo. Yeah, he, 
fucking scarf that. Oh yeah. Swimming cool. on the rocks. See, that's one of the beauties of uh, barbless. It comes right out. Go get bigger. Good job, Mike. It's good to. Uh, I'm glad you're cleaning the pike out around the Brookville waters. <laughs> yeah, you got me. it, buddy. You know, just that's what I'm here for. Just like <sighs> pike master. Spin, spin them out for me, Mike the Pike. <laughs> oh, I thought I hit the giantest brook trout of that's all time. That's all right. On. But there are, yeah, there's big pike here, but they're heavy, heavy, heavy too. Like, it's a lot of heft to them. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Min Kota and Humminbird. The views across Nipigon are breathtaking. Blue water and wilderness as far as the eye can see. Regardless if we catch any fish, I was just glad for the experience. Fishing. I saw that. How long do they live, did you say? Like five to seven years is an old one. Wow. Yeah, they're quite short lived. So how does one get to 14 pounds? They, they grow really fast. And, and Lake Superior Coasters are the same genetic stuff. There's no difference. Oh, they've, no kidding. Yeah, they've done uh, all sorts of genetics on them. They're basically the same fish. Catch and release only? It's, uh, to keep a fish here, it's gotta be 22 inches or over. To keep it? Yep. A 22 inch brook trout spawned three times. So you've got three spawns out of it. And that, that changed, like when I started fishing here, it used to be five fish any size, and this was not happening. What we're experiencing here right now, it didn't exist at that time. And so protecting those fish and, and uh, not harvesting them uh, has been huge. So it's, it's not a catch and release fishery as such. You can harvest one if you want. I generally don't, but uh, that 22-incher that and over has, uh, has done its part. Up he goes. They're survivors. Do the fish just roam a certain, like flats, or do they relate to that break? So or they're, so are they're, they just everywhere? So they'll hang around these uh, breaks just the same, like, you know, same way a smallmouth would, looking for uh, minnows hanging off of it or bugs. Like, brookies like, like uh, breaks, they like boulders, they like points. And, uh, and, and in this lake, they do cruise around, like, Right. But there's certain spots, spots they park on as well. Like, there is a certain amount of current in this lake, believe it or not, and they'll hang off of spots that have a current break on them. It's pretty wild. There he is. Fish on. Looks like a good one, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, it wrapped, dude. I'm trying to get over you. We got mayhem. I got it. I got it. Yeah, you got it. See that mad skills I had? Holy, this guy is just... He's cool. under the boat. Yeah. This is awesome. Oh, wild. The fish is on this side. Oh, there he is. He's wild. He's over here. I think I might switch to a hair jig. This is, you know what? Like, um, and it's brown too. It's just like a buggy yeah. thing. I'm just thinking, well, maybe in all that. Wow. There's, There's one that cartwheeled. <laughs> Remember, I said they don't, they don't uh, jump. Well, that one just came out of the water. Yeah, I know the cart, the. Uh, the buggy uh, hair jig sometimes when it's warm and there's a lot of like nymphs and stuff. Yeah, I saw me. a few flies. Yeah. Okay, here he comes. Oh, there we go. Good job. Almost knocked him off. Good job. Another beauty. Wow. Hey, stay still. Now He's the barbels break. usually comes out pretty easy. I'm just gonna break that hair jig off and put it on my rod. <laughs> well, I got more. That guy just smashed it. That was a totally different hit. Just like that's impressive. Crushed it. It's and it's the same method you use in the river. It's kind of a yeah. A it's, hop, it's, cross so you're between, kind of uh, you're kind of like throwing it and, and so then, it's cross between jigging and fly fishing. Right. And here you can see we got significant current happening here. Right. Yeah. So and I'm boulders. Just, just kind of swimming it, and they just, they just come out of the boulders and grab it. Okay. Hold. Okay. So watch this. She says 18 or 19. It might be bigger. Oh, no, 19. What in the world? It is 19. Oh, huh. Right. You know everything. This, this dude is a stud. This one's a little more silvery than that last one. We'll find that See spot that you like, kid. And we'll get you. There he goes. That's pretty cool. I'm getting you a hair jig ready here, eh? We're going to get Hair you, jig time. We're going to get you one. The Fishing Edge is brought to you by Minn Kota and Humminbird. 
To get the edge over the trout, we ran the Lund 1875 Pro-V powered by a Mercury 4-stroke 200 Pro-XS. A VMC bucktail jig cast with 13 fishing Omen Black medium action spinning rods and 13 fishing reels spooled with 10 pound suffix braid and a 6 pound suffix fluorocarbon leader got us lots of action. And of course, a Lucky Strike net and CUDA tools made sure all the trout were landed and released back in the lake. One of the problems on Lake Nipigon when you first come here and start fishing is that everything looks good. Yeah. Like every shoreline, every point, lots of places for fish to hide. <laughs> fish! That it's on boy. your rod, August. Come that and get boy. it. That's a trout. Hold on tight. Don't let it slack, okay? Just keep reeling and keep it tight. <laughs> In the gap! In the gap. I threw it back to the gap. Oh, that's a big trout. Oh, oh that's my. a big, oh, <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Keep it up. Bring it right to me, okay? Oh, boy. You just do your thing. You're doing great. That's a big one. Rod up. Oh, you're just spinning. Bring it over. This way, this way. Keep, keep reeling, keep reeling. Her line's, uh, her line's spinning here a little bit. I know. Just keep it tight, August. Just tighten it up a little bit. Not too much. Okay, real, real, real. Oh, oh, it's okay. It's, it's better than the option, because the rod doesn't bend much, Gord. Okay. It's a stiffy. Wow. That's a big right trout. Right to me, rod to me. Whoa. Bring it to me. Up in the air. Oh my, August, seek the beaver. Come on, kid. On that purpley pink jig. <laughs> Yay! Whoa! Wow. That's a, look at that, wow. it's gorgeous. Look Step at that down, girl. tank. Good job, August. Wow. That is a Nipigon Brookie Holy in uh, Boom. Give me knuckles, kid. Boom. Good job, August. That is a tank. Look at that. Okay. We'll put them in the light yeah, well, we'll and then we'll get a picture. Get them washed off a little bit. This fins are starting to go nice and red. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. That's a fat. Big That's a 23-incher anyway. Okay, let's get them a little bit of water here and perk them up. Make sure he's good to go before you let him go. I just Job, kept... August. Well done. Hey, and you know the best part is? I still have yet to get one. 22. Just, yeah, 22 inches. Huh. And fat. <laughs> Gord ran us to all his favorite spots connecting on some spectacular fish. But before we could go home, I needed to get one for myself. Fish? Yep. <laughs> on the board. <laughs> Goodbye, little fella. You got one. Well, ah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> August, how are you feeling? Yeah? I think you might have caught, well, I, Gord's fish beat yours, you know? Yeah, I caught the second biggest one. Yeah, and you know what I caught? The no. smallest you got the trout of the day. No oh. And I never did catch that 50-inch uh, alligator. No. So I'm going to have to come back and You'll have fish to come back. You. Absolutely. Yeah. You're no. more than welcome. But in all seriousness, it's uh, it's been a pleasure spending a day and a half fishing yeah. with you. Yeah, it's, it's been my pleasure. And, uh, I'm exhausted. Yeah, it's. I mean, we worked. We worked hard today, but we got some beauties. You've lost faith in me as an angler. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I've been in your shoes many times. Believe yeah, me. that's why they call me Mike the Pike. Okay. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Did you like catching that trout? Fought pretty good. Good. No, it's been awesome. I mean, you know, I could have come out here and got skunked, and to see her reel in a brook yeah, trout no, lake, uh, a this fish. lake is is impressive. So. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's an amazing lake. <laughs> anyway, no, it's been awesome. It'll be a nice boat ride across here, and we'll take it all in. Yep. And uh, enjoy the ride home and drive off into the sunset. Yeah. Fishing on Lake Nipigon is like yeah, watching a great movie that you wish would never end. But like all things, it did have to end. And as we headed back to the landing, I took in the views and recounted the day's events, truly appreciating what I just got to experience with my daughter and hoping to one day return. Thanks, Gord.
Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you in part by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by Canadian Tire, Mercury Marine, and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffolk Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, and Yukon Gear. For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, conserve and protect our great outdoors.